I bid you a warm welcome to our Sunday evening service of Evensong. Our opening hymn is in the Red Hymn Book, number 75, The Day of Resurrection, number 75. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Mm. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them from the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice 
unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm is in the insert, and it's Psalm 66, the first 11 verses.
The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Here ends the first reading. Thank you. 
The second reading is taken from Luke, chapter 24, verse 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Here ends the second reading.
page 7, we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Give unto thy servants that peace with the 
I invite you to stand for our anthem on this occasion. Our anthem is the Hallelujah Chorus from George Frederick Handel's Messiah. The words are on your insert. Mighty God, we ask that you would speak through me today and that each of us would hear your voice and see you as our living Lord. Amen. Well, what a joyful noise unto our Lord, the hallelujah chorus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah is Hebrew for praise the Lord. And that beautiful sense that he will reign forever and ever. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But it wasn't like that for those two on that Emmaus road, was it? We don't quite know. It was Easter day, that first day of resurrection. 
And they had been with the disciples somehow, Cleopas and this unnamed companion, maybe Mary, uh, one of the many, many, many Marys in the Bible. And uh, sometime during that Sunday, that first day of the week, they decided to leave Jerusalem and head home, one expects, to Emmaus. It's about a two-hour walk. And they were downcast, we're told. And they had some of a story. A stranger comes up to them and asks, what are you chatting about? And they share what's been going on in Jerusalem. They talk about someone called Jesus of Nazareth. It's a great start. They've worked out that Jesus came from Nazareth. They've worked out that he is like a prophet. They've known that he is powerful in word and deed. They've listened to his stories and his teaching and his his, uh, miracles uh, of healing and of uh, bread uh, given to 5,000, of storms still. They might have heard that story. They might have been there when Lazarus was raised from the dead. They know this Jesus is someone amazing. And in the horror of horrors, this amazing Jesus, so good to so many in so many ways, is handed over by the chief priests and rulers to be sentenced to death. Death on the most awful thing called a cross. They crucified him, they say. And it was all hopes dashed. They say to the stranger with them, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. That's why we're going home now. It's over. And they say here, But on the third day, which would have been that morning, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, and his body wasn't there. We don't know what's going on. They came and told us that these women, they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. But that's all we know. tomb is empty and the companions who went to check out the woman's story they didn't see Jesus how close can they be to the truth that this Jesus is risen the tomb is empty and all it needed them was to see him for themselves. And of course that happens later as they're sitting at the table for for the evening meal and Jesus takes bread, give thanks, breaks it and begins it to give give to them and then their eyes were opened and they recognised him. And they knew that empty tomb was empty because Jesus, the prophet, the powerful in word and deed before God and all people, was the one who is going to redeem Israel. In fact, not just Israel, but the whole world. He is the one who is going to be able to bring about uh, life after death, and that for all people, to restore our relationship, relationship with our God, our Heavenly Father. This is the joy we have on this day. It's why we can sing hallelujah, and he shall reign forever and ever. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And if Jesus hadn't come alongside those two, would they have gone back to Jerusalem? Maybe Jesus is calling you even now to the glory of who he is and that he has risen from the dead for you is something you need to grasp. And in your heart and mind, go to that Jerusalem of your own and meet the risen Jesus in your heart and know that he is alive today and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We remain seated or we kneel in prayer.
in joy and in hope. Let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we pray that our risen Saviour may fill us and all the people who worship here at Holy Trinity and all your people around the world who know you as their Lord and Saviour. You will fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love with the love that Christ showed us. We pray that he who can provide all things may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter and that we would be his hands and feet in love doing that. We pray that by his power war and famine may cease through all the world longing that you would stay the hands of men and women who seek violence. Men and women who are greedy and hold back. That war and famine would end. We pray that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying. To comfort and strengthen them especially those known to ourselves. We pray that according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day to stand before him in glory, welcomed as God's heavenly, as God's children. We pray that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather our prayers and praises in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our notices for this week is to remind you that the church is closed to give uh, uh, our volunteers a break, uh, but we will be open on Wednesday uh, from half past 11 through to about 2.30 uh, for a, mid a midweek communion service at 12 noon here and then followed by a wonderful concert uh, by a gentleman called Julian, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, Julian Clef. Um, uh, extraordinary pianist and really encourage you if you are able to come. It's free admission. Obviously, we welcome donations after you go, but uh, free admission. Do come and enjoy Wednesday here over lunchtime. Next Sunday evening, uh, our service is evening prayer as we give our choir a rest from all their labours over Holy Week and Easter. But do join us for evening prayer and even song will return in two weeks' time. All our other notices are available on our website or there is a paper version at the back of church. Just ask me as you leave. Our offertory hymn during which a collection will be taken is number 78, number 78. The strife is o'er, the battle done.
God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.